In every sport, there are masters of the game whose skills eclipse the competition. A mix of natural ability and countless hours perfecting their craft. Ever wondered what it would be like to learn from one of these greats? Golf with Jack Nicklaus, race with Andretti, or skate with Gretzky? Well, today you get to spend a day on the water with one of the best anglers in the world and follow him as he dissects a new body of water. A front row seat that reveals how Al Linder finds and catches largemouth bass during the spring transition period. Fact is, pre-spawn bass can be a tough nut to crack. Winter finally over, water begins warming, and the largemouth's instinct to reproduce awakens. Fish vacate wintering areas and stay on the move, based on changing water temperature, barometric pressure, salooner phase, wind direction, and forage. The trick is to find the transitional areas where they're set up, which can change from day to day. Bass will eventually end up on the spawning flats, in bays, coves, and creek arms. But for now, they're very much a moving target. So it's best to stay versatile and cover lots of water. A program made faster and more efficient thanks to today's advanced electronics and innovative search bait designs. On today's Edge, Al Linder shares how he builds a winning pattern, including tips for finding pre-spawn bass, must-have presentations, including a deadly one-two punch of search bait and finesse follow-up. We think you'll agree, there are a myriad of reasons to chase bass before bedtime. Not only do pre-spawn bass offer some of the best bites of the year, these fish are also at their heaviest. Now fill up your coffee cup, sit back, and enjoy a day on the water with Al. Pretty split run of fish. Probably the swim jig. The swim jig and the standard jig were the two best baits for me today. No question about that. Nice run of fish though, aren't they? Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Hey, I'm really excited about today and tomorrow morning. About two weeks ago, a friend of mine fished this lake in a walleye tournament. And when I talked to him after the tournament, he said, yeah, we really caught some nice largemouth bass. Now, over the years, I've driven by here many times. I never fished the lake. I got to thinking after he mentioned a largemouth bass bite here, I says, I got to go take a look and see what the bass fishing is like here. So I drove four hours, hooked my lund up, put the boat in the water, fished five and a half hours, pulled out, drove back to Brainerd for four hours. In that five and a half hours that I was on the water, I caught 19 largemouth bass. The biggest one was about a good solid four and a half. I said, every time I'd set the hook, I kept thinking, man, I wish I had a camera here with me. This would have made a great television show. Well, guess what? It's five days later, and I have a camera with me. We'll see if the bite changed at all from five days ago. And I'll just share with you some of the things I learned in a short while on a new lake. Took about six, seven casts. Mm -hmm. Close to where we started. Close. Close, close, close. All right. Come here, baby. Fish number one. Well, let's see. Oh, come here, come here, come here, huh? Nice one, huh? It's interesting. What I seen the last time when I was here, biggest fish I caught was up in here that four and a half. I started on this point. You know, we'll see what happened. That didn't take long. Kind of interesting. The deepest that I caught a fish the other day when I was here, deepest was three feet. I love fishing water like this. I doubt that these fish, almost all season long, I'll bet you these bass are shallow in here. Dark stained water, a lot of shallow water boulders. You know, today's a beautiful day. It's sunny, it's warm. Water temperature is about 57. When I was here, it was 56. Yeah, you know, a few days back. And uh, in this water, I caught the fish on slow stick baits, you know, spinner bait, swim jig, some crank baits. I was really covering a lot of water. Everything came off of rocks. Like it just, oh, this lake is notorious for big boulders, like you're, uh, like I'm fishing here. And the boulders is what had all the the bass on it. Good start. 
Last time I was here, this water, I couldn't see about eight, 10 inches. I had no idea what it looked like. Uh, I was catching, I caught some really good fish on the end of this point here. And uh, like I said, I said, I couldn't see a thing. So water really, really, really cleared up a lot. That's a good thing. I can fish a lot faster. I can cover a lot more water quicker, you know, with moving baits. Then I get into some of these areas where I see those big boulders and a lot of them I'll slow down and, and throw stick bait around there and, and a jig a little bit. In the meantime, I'll just keep moving. When you can't see anything, you know, you're afraid to nudge up. I had some, there, a little, a little better fish there. Yeah. See, I had some good ones here. Okay. I know you're, you're better than that because I had a whole bunch of you better than that. But I'll take you. Huh? Nice fish. Nice fish. Those moving baits is, is what's happening. I'm telling you that the water cleared so much. That's the only shocking thing to me, how clear it got. I didn't expect that. This thing was so riled from the wind. This is the way to learn a lake when you could see bottom, where you could see where these boulders, how these big rocks are laid out in here. That big boulder there's gotta have, is gotta have what looks to me like a jig fish. Right about there. Oh God, a little better, a little better one on the jig. A little better one. You know, it's interesting. Come here, baby. The last time I was here, <laughs> came back through here, and, and as usual, the better fish been on a jig on a deep rock. That's a nice one there. I had, uh, of those 19 fish that I talked about that first day that I was here, and I caught, I caught them almost equal. I caught them on, in a real dirty water, dark water when I go down there that was dirty. And I caught them mainly on a spinnerbait. When I got in the clear water like this, it was the jig and a, a stick bait that worked the best. That was my test baits. And uh, right now, holding pretty much the same. Caught, caught a few fish on each of them. Good one. That's a good one. That's, that's a good one. That's the kind I'm looking for. Oh, man. Oh, I lost her. Oh, man. A fiver, a fever. Spring, it's here. And for us, that means heading outdoors. That's where you'll find us. We work, we cut, we plant, we renew and renovate outdoors. And of course, we fish. At the end of the day, we relax outdoors. We were born in the Midwest. We are outdoors, always. Mills Fleet Farm. Lund builds the best fishing boats, but did you know how affordable the best can be? Take the 1625 Fury XL side console, for example. Starting prices have been slashed, a savings of nearly $3,000. Or the 1625 Fury XL Sport walkthrough windshield, a savings of over $3,000. Always wanted to get into a new Lund? Visit Lundboats.com for your free catalog and to find a dealer near you. And take advantage of these great savings.
there's no place like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. This segment is brought to you by Northwest Ontario. There's no place like this. Ooh, that looks like a bowl right there that, I, that I'd want to get a big bite on. Right there, I could see the top of that. It's nice and sunny and calm. That's what I needed today, where I could see those big boulders. Might have to throw a jig on there real quick. Yesterday with the intermittent in and out, in and out sun, I couldn't see a lot of these spots. I was coming up on them too fast. Today's a different story. It'll only get better and better. Like that, like that, right away. Right? Look at that. Right away. Not a big one, but a but a right one. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, see, that's what I was talking about, about, about when you can see on a day like this, I could see those rocks and make the right cast to, to it. I ran that swim jig over that big boulder first. I got no bites on it. I threw that jig right behind it. Bam. I'll get some big ones today doing this, I, I guarantee you, because I could see exactly what what I got a cast to. This be a first transition, this big rock, rock point coming out. And you can see in back of me, this is a shallow water bay. That's where I found a lot of those fish yesterday. Uh, those fish will be staging to, to spawn back there. You know, they'll set up here first here, that island I didn't fish yet. They'll be on here before they go back in there. Those fish this time of the year love calm and sun. And they don't like, they like to get out of the wind. And the back side of these reefs, you can see if you get a heavy south uh, east wind coming in here, they'll be on this side, the lee side of this big point with those boulders. They get behind it from the predominant wind. They don't like to be up on the front end of it now. That happens all the time, this time of the year. Wind is not necessarily your friend. I want to show you a rod and reel combo that I really fell in love with lately. This is a St. Croix Legend uh, a tournament series, and uh, uh, it's a sweet combination. But what makes it so sweet is I got a Daiwa reel on here, and they call it the Daiwa Zillion. There are a couple, a couple different things about that are unique. How would you like a bait casting reel that won't backlash on you? You don't believe me, do you? I want you to watch this. Now I got a spinner bait on here, and a spinner bait takes up a lot of resistance when you cast it. Watch this now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hold, I'm gonna make the cast, and I'm gonna show you the reel. Watch this. You see how far I stop? <laughs> Bingo. It's an amazing, it is totally backlash free. You're not gonna backlash. Diawazillion, it's, it's just an amazing combination with the St. St. Croix 6.8. Medium power. I'm going to show you that again. Can you see it here? Look at the distance. <laughs> Isn't that something? paid to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line. Right here. My thinking spot. My fishing spot. My spot! 
Not yours. This is where I go. For release. And for catch and release. Where no one can find me. And fish can't hide from me. This is my spot. And I ain't going nowhere. Let us make this absolutely clear. The days of wasted casts and missed opportunities are over. New Mega Imaging takes fishing into the megahertz range for the first time. Because higher frequency sonar means higher frequency of this. Without a doubt, it's the most detailed picture of the world below ever. And it's only from Humminbird. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. That's a, that's a filmer right there. Looking at the jig. Looking at it. I got him. <laughs> oh, that one's a good one. I seen that fish coming. Look at this. Whoa, man. Nice fish. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nice fish. Water cleared up really, really good here. You know, really good. This is a good gal. Come here, what do you see this mimo? Come here, baby. Come here. Look at that one, huh? Woo! That's a nice fish, boy, look at that. That's a big bass. That's the kind of fish we like hunting this time of the year up here. Whoo! That's a big, big gale for a northern bass. Anytime, let me put her back. <laughs> that was a good fish. That's the kind I'm looking for. I could see in the afternoon with this calm weather, these bass are coming in more and more and more. Uh, you know, this time of the year, the stage of pre-spawn where you get a lot of the water in and around 55 degrees, give or take a little bit, I believe there's more versatility that you need to catch bass on a continuing, continuous basis, day in and day out, than any other time of the year. These fish in and around this, this time frame before they get ready to actually go on beds hit a lot, a lot of different kind of baits. If you can imagine a pyramid, the bottom of the pyramid, the bottom third, it's this time of the year for a largemouth bass that most baits can catch fish depending on the environment, the kind of cover, the body of water you're on. It's a time you gotta really be versatile. It's fair to say largemouth bass are far more transient in the spring like this than any other time of the year. What does that mean? Well, in spring, there's lots of weather changes. The bass are constantly on the move. They're in, they're out, they're up, they're down, and you gotta be versatile with your presentations. Here is a 4x4 grocery list of horizontal and vertical lures. These are my favorite go-to baits at this time frame. Okay, let's start out with the fast-moving horizontal lures. A square-billed crankbait is a must-have. I like the Storm Square Arashi 3 or 5. These baits have a very unique action that bass love at this time frame. Next is the spinnerbait. The Terminator Willow Leaf is a go-to bait. It's made out of titanium, so the thing takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. I have some spinner baits that are five years old. How about a swim jig? Well, I got one of those too. I love the Terminator swim jig with a big bite cane thumper on it. It's so simple, it's tough to beat. The Storm 360 GT search bait is the new guy on the block, and it's becoming a mainstay for any type of fish. All bass love the natural swimming action of this lure, and the head has a rattle chamber, which gets the attention of the big bass. This is one of those baits you have tied on all year long for any species of fish you're after. Last but not least is a lipless crankbait. The Rapala Rip and Wrap has produced countless bass for me over the years. All right, next up, vertical lures. One, a Terminator Pro's jig and a big bite crawl. This is an old faithful. Two, a VMC four or five out hook, a bullet sinker, and a big bite creature bait Texas rig. Three, a weightless five out VMC wide gap and a big bite wacky stick. Four, take the same wacky stick and rig it on a VMC wacky hook and you're set. 
You rig up these baits and I guarantee you'll put bass in a boat. Medium one. Medium one. Come here, come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. Tired? Yeah, you are. I beat up on you pretty good. Uh, how's that one, huh? You know, the pattern for me has been really, really consistent. And I need the big, big boulders up on shallow flats. And uh, no fish in wood, you need these big scattered boulders. You know, they're mega boulders. The biggest boulders on a flat are what's holding the fish. You know, good fish like this. And uh, uh, you, you know, you all, if you fish a lot, you heard the term where people talk about pattern fishing. Yeah, yeah, you know, what's pattern fishing? It's a certain type of uh, 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 structure with a certain kind of cover and a certain kind of lure that's working to make that happen. Well, hummingbird on their units, and they're the only people I know that have, have this, they have a thing called Smart Strike. Yep, Smart Strike, and it's really amazing, especially when you're fishing lakes that you're not familiar with and looking to set up a, a pattern. This is the way it works. Take a look at this thing. In a nutshell, Hummingbird Smart Strike allows you to harness map data to pattern fish on the Onyx, the Ion, and a select Helix series there's an SD card that gives you the ability to first off, select the lake you're going to be fishing. Then the fun begins. You can highlight several search criteria to help you isolate some key locations. For example, fish species, lake region, season, structure. All of this information is cross-referenced and key locations that fit all this criteria are highlighted. It's important to note that this is just a sample of the search info that you can get. Got him. And once you get a fish, you can update the search criteria and it'll show you all the similar locations on the lake. It's amazing. Good fish. When you see this baby, whoa, whoa. Whoa, yeah. Come on, come on, mama. Whoa, this flat is so right. Look at, look at the size of that baby, huh? Wow, wow. Ugh. I gotta get, I don't wanna spook him. Look at that fish. What a fish. Whew. You know, I'm coming over a, a big, long, skinny rock ridge. And uh, I've seen some fish swimming over the top. That's a big fish. That's a good fish there. Really a good fish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell him down here. Big fish. Don't just fall from the sky. Here for Angling Buzz. I'm Tony Roden. Brian Rolston. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web. Current up to date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. It's quiet on the river this morning. Ain't nobody on the water but me. And the sun is coming on, but it won't be long. But there's a little more weight coming in this creek. I took a line with that woman of mine. And she sent me on down. Now I'm making noise with the alligator boys. 20 miles is a go shake. Making noise with the alligator boys. 20 miles is a go 
The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Another pretty darn, pretty darn nice fish. Well, I'll grab you. So it's interesting. Today was a pretty split run of fish. Probably the swim jig, the swim jig and the standard jig were the two best baits for me today. No question about that. Nice run of fish, though, aren't they? Nice run of fish. I don't know what, what I caught today. Uh, I think it might be pushing 17 or 18, but a lot of nice fish. Fun day on the water. You know, when you get on a lot of these lakes like this where, where, where you haven't been on them for the first time and you're wanting to read the water and see what the bite is like, you get good stable weather like this, the fish are biting, that makes it a lot easier. It gives you the confidence to come back, you know, and also the baits that you use. I think I'm gonna call it a wrap. I got about a four hour drive to go home. Hey, the other day, my nephew Dan, who does a whole lot of the TV work, edits most of the Edge television shows and does a lot of the shooting, comes into my office and he says, Al, I've got something on my heart that I'd like to share with a lot of our viewers. Do you mind if I do one of the television closes with you? Have at it, Daniel. <laughs> so my wife and I uh, had a difficult time having children and it was quite a process. And when we were doing it, I realized how many young people had problems similar to ours. And uh, <clears throat> going through this whole thing, it dawned on me that some people don't uh, know what a blessing they have. You know, they have children, they don't know how much work it can take for some people. You know, these kids are just a great blessing for everybody and they need to be uh, nurtured and, you know, treated with respect and loved on. And sometimes you see these families that have kids that, that end up with cancer and these terrible things and you scratch your head and you're like, why, you know? I just wanted to encourage everybody out there to do whatever you can for some of these kids or families that are in need. You know, there's national things like the Make-A-Wish Foundation or there's a lot of things locally that you can do to help these kids or these families that have been uh, stricken with a lot of difficult things, you know? So I just wanted to encourage people to look into it and. Uh, do whatever you can do. That was shared from his heart, and I appreciate that. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you all in the water, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.